Okay, so here today we're here to talk about syndesmotic injuries. So syndesmotic injuries are um, very commonly reported in newspapers regarding sporting injuries, but they're not that well understood in the medical world. And so I'm hoping to explain them today. Uh, as always, the advice in this video is just for education. So if you've got a problem, you really should see your local doctor. Um, so exactly what are syndesmotic injuries and how do they occur? So in order to talk about syndesmotic injuries, we actually need to talk about ankle sprains because a syndesmotic injury is actually a form of ankle sprain. So there are actually two types of ankle sprains. Um, there, first of all, there is the common ankle sprain that we all know about that we've suffered as kids or playing soccer or netball. That's termed a low ankle sprain. And the other set of ankle sprain is, is termed a high ankle sprain. Now, high ankle sprain makes up 15 to 20% of sprains, and a low ankle sprain makes up about 80%. The high sprains are your syndesmotic injury. So to understand that better, we need to draw a picture of the ankle with its ligaments. So the drawing here is of the red ligaments. They're the syndesmotic injuries that are associated with a high ankle sprain. The, the ligaments in green are the ATFL and the CFL. Now they're the ligaments that are commonly involved in a low or common ankle sprain that we're more aware of. Now low ankle sprains are generally the less severe injury to happen, so 90% of them will get better. You usually occur with an inversion injury, so you roll your foot in. You usually improve with physio, and only a small number of patients have ongoing instability which they might need treated. And what that means is you generally have a happier or a better outcome with a low ankle sprain than you will with a high ankle sprain, and only a small number of those patients will need surgery. Now, a high ankle sprain is a bit of a different beast. It's not well understood. It's often missed. It often comes to foot and ankle surgeons late. It's a bit of an elephant in the room. And how bad can it be? Well, in order to know how bad it can be, we need to grade the injury. And syndesmotic injuries are not graded A, B, C. They're graded 1, 2, 3. So we're going to draw some pictures here to show you what that means. So here we are with our ankle picture again. And we're going to focus where this circle area is. What I want you to imagine is that you've got, you're have got looking up towards the tibia from the bottom of your ankle, so from your heel, and so that you only see the tibia and the small bone next to it called the fibula. And what we see is that the syndesmotic ligaments, actually three ligaments, is the front one called the AITFL, one at the back called the PITFL, and then there's another one in the middle called the interosseous ligament, or IOL. So it's more complicated than we think. Now for a grade one injury, you just injure the ligament at the front, that's the AITFL. So that's a grade one syndesmotic injury, they generally don't need surgery, but the recovery time is longer than you think. A grade 2 injury means you go through the front and the middle. So you go through the AITFL and the IOL, but your PITFL at the back is intact. A grade 3 injury goes through all three ligaments, and that's much worse. So you go through your AITFL, your PITFL at the back, and your interosseous ligament. And that definitely leads to some instability around your ankle and can cause problems. And so here we're going to draw some picture, a picture to show what happens. So this is an intact ankle. And here is one about to be drawn that shows that the syndesmotic ligaments aren't intact. And we see here that the other bones further down that make up the ankle tend to shift to the outside. As well, your small bone there, the fibula, will shift to the outside. And that means that your ankle is uh, the joint is moving abnormally and what that can lead to is chronic ankle dysfunction so there's chronically something wrong with your ankle. You can have ongoing pain in your ankle, there can be a delay in return to sports and certainly some people won't get to return to sport and there's a potential risk of arthritis in the ankle going forward because it's, it is loading abnormally through that area. So fortunately there are some clues that might give you an idea that you've had a syndesmotic injury or, or a high ankle sprain rather than a low typical ankle sprain. So the first of all is the area of tenderness. So here we are, we're going to draw an ankle. The areas in red are the, are the areas that are consistent with areas of pain for a syndesmotic injury, so a high ankle sprain. The area in blue there is the area that's consistent with a low ankle sprain and they're around the knuckle, so the lateral knuckle of your ankle called the lateral malleolus. The picture here is showing an inversion injury where the foot rolls in and this is not consistent with a high ankle sprain. This is more consistent with a low ankle sprain and we're going to mark here because it involves the low ankle ligaments rather than the high ankle ligaments. The mechanism where you get a high ankle sprain is like this, where your foot rolls out from eversion or external rotation injury and that's a more serious type of injury. 
Now there are some clinical tests, so some things that your doctor will look at to try and provoke pain. This one on the left is called the squeeze test, and the one on there is called the, the external rotation test. If either of those tests produce pain in your ankle, you may have a syndesmotic injury. It is important also that you get a weight-bearing x-ray of the ankle, first of all to rule out a fracture, but secondly to see if there's any areas that open up in your ankle that shouldn't that can indicate a syndesmotic injury. Now most ankle x-rays are taken with the patient lying down, they shouldn't be, they should be standing up like you're going to draw here that Steve's doing. Now this is an MRI and if we suspect you've got a syndesmotic injury we will get an MRI. So the image on the right here is showing that you can have a three ligament injury, so a grade three injury. The image there on the left is your, is your normal MRI with things marked and we're about to rub that out and show an, an injured MRI image. So the red arrow shows the AITFL is gone and the green arrow shows that there's increased signal within the PITFL showing that there's an injury to all three ligaments. That's a grade three injury. So then what are the consequences of a syndesmotic injury? Well, it depends what grade you've got. So a grade one injury, as we spoke about before, where you just go through that front ligament only, they usually don't need an operation, but they take a long time to recover. So even the UEFA professional soccer players, where they've got all that backroom staff, they take five weeks at least to return to play. And the grade two and grade three injuries, where you do more areas of the syndesmosis, they usually need an arthroscopy, so they do need surgery. And we're drawing here an ankle probe. So what we do for the ankle probe is we actually place the probe into the area between your tibia and the fibula, so it, the area where those ligaments are broken. You shouldn't be able to get a probe in there four millimeters if they're intact, if those ligaments are intact. And so if we can do that, then your ankle is generally unstable. And what that means is that we then have to put some fixation in there like this to stabilize it. So then what's the critical thing with these type of injuries? Well, not all of them need surgery, but time is of the essence. They need to be picked up early and sorted out early. And the reason for that is that there is a study that's been out recently that shows that if you treat these injuries with surgery after six months, they do far worse than if you treat them within six weeks. If you treat them after six months, they're more likely to have pain, they're more likely to have a poorer quality of life, and they're more likely to have difficulty with activities of daily living. And so the key message is, is that you need an early referral to an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon if you're suspicious of this injury, or if the clinician looking after you is suspicious of this injury. But thank you for listening to my talk. And uh, if you need any more information, you visit www.hunterfootandankle.com.au.